How are you doing? It's good to see you again. Good to see you. So we wanted to talk about uh, this Trump is really a, uh, he's a mess. So we wanted to talk about ways to legally uh, get him out of office. So there are two legal ways to get him out of office. One is through impeachment and the other is through the 25th Amendment. So let's do that. Let's start with impeachment. You have all have your phones, so turn to Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution, please. That's the uh, Article 1 of the Constitution deals with the powers of Congress, and Article 2 deals with the powers of the President. Article 2, Section 4. So when you get it, look, look up and I'll have you read uh, what it says about impeachment. You got Article 2, Section 4? Uh, yeah. So this is what it says. It says um, a president can be removed for committing, this, this is the quote, treason, bribery, and high crimes and misdemeanors. So we know what treason means, we know what bribery means, but what about high crimes and misdemeanors? This constitutional scholars. I mean, a misdemeanor is like, here and now, a man might be like in a possession of marijuana or something but it like that. Meant, but it, meant, it obviously meant something different yeah. in, in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. So Alexander Hamilton tried to define it in Federalist Number 65. Check it out. The Federalist Papers, remember, were written after the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia in, 17, um, in 1780, but before the, the states voted to accept the new Constitution. So for that year, Hamilton, Madison, and John Jay wrote these essentially advertisements and papers all over the 13 states at the time to try to convince voters to accept the new constitution. And uh, Hamilton wrote number 65. Do you have it? Yeah, I have it. In the second paragraph, he says, um, high crimes and misdemeanors are those offenses which proceed from the misconduct of public men. Do you see it? You have it? Second paragraph which proceed from the misconduct of public men, or in other words, from the abuse or violation of some public trust. So apparently that's what high crimes and misdemeanors meant in the 18th century. It has a different meaning now. They are of a nature which may, with peculiar, peculiar propriety, be determined political. Now this is important because political is in italics. You see it here? So this is going to become important later on in our history. So these high crimes must be have to be of a political nature, as they um, as they relate chiefly to injuries done immediately to the society itself. Okay, so we'll come back to this to this uh, Hamiltonian definition later on. Well, I don't want to hold you in suspense. So when Clinton is, uh, is, is sexually harassing these young women, you understand, and he lies about it, we're going to come back to this in detail later, they want to impeach him. As, as we'll find out, and as you remember, they were unsuccessful. The people that the defendant Clinton said, screwing young girls is not a political act. I mean, that's, that was the argument. Going back to uh, whether it's right or not, that's at least his lawyers read the Federalist Papers. Let's put it that way. So here's how impeachment works. It, the impeachment process begins when a majority of the House Judiciary Committee decides to bring these charges, treason, bribery, high crimes, and misdemeanors. Uh, against the president and sends the charges to the full house for a vote. 
the majority of the House Judiciary Committee. How many members are on the Judiciary Committee? Um, I think 30. Okay. And of course, remember the party that has a majority in that House has a majority on the committee. Mm -hmm. A majority of the House is required to send these charges to the Senate, where a trial is conducted. Mm -hmm. Now, a committee is chosen by the House. It could be made up of some U.S. representatives or, or lawyers or a combination of the two. A committee is chosen by the House to act like prosecutors in this Senate trial. The President chooses attorneys to defend him, and he's supposed to pay these attorneys himself. But what, ha what happened with Nixon and, um, and Clinton was that they started a uh, fund, you know, other people paid for the lawyers, hundreds of millions of dollars. So the entire Senate acts as a jury, mm -hmm. listening to the uh, evidence presented by the prosecutors chosen by the House and the defense by the lawyers chosen by the uh, president. And, then they, and, and the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court acts as the presiding judge. And they need a two-thirds vote in the Senate to uh, convict the president and remove him immediately from office. So we're clear about the procedure. Okay, so the a majority in the House, but two-thirds in the Senate. Okay. So it goes from the Judiciary Committee to a wider vote in the House? Exactly. Okay. Okay. So um, the first president impeached was Andrew Johnson in 1868. Do you remember the history of that? Anybody remember the history? No, that's much later. Anybody? Bank of the bank. It has to do with the, the, the years after the Civil War reconstruction. And this, like this, well, this Johnson was an interesting character. He was the only um, Southern senator to, su to side with the, the North. And so in Lincoln's second term, he wanted as much support from all over the country as he could, so he made Andrew Johnson his vice president, which I think made sense politically. But then uh, something horrible happens. Lincoln is killed and Johnson becomes president. And Johnson was a kind of uh, loose cannon. He was drunkard. And, uh, so now the war is over. The Republicans in Congress wanted to keep federal troops in the South for a very long time protect the rights of the newly freed slaves. But Johnson, being a southerner, wanted to get the federal troops out as soon as possible. So there was this uh, enmity that was established between the uh, Republicans in Congress and uh, Johnson. Johnson had a particularly uh, acrimonious relationship with the Secretary of War by the name of Stanton. He was originally Lincoln's Secretary of War. And Stanton wanted to keep federal troops along with radical Republicans in Congress in the South as long as possible. So he made it clear he was going to fire Stanton and um, replace him with a guy who felt Johnson was going to fire Stanton. The president had the power to fire people in his own administration. Secretary of War was part of the cabinet and replace him with a guy who agreed with Johnson. All right? So Congress immediately passes what they call the uh, Tenure of Office Act. And the Tenure of Office Act prohibited presidents from firing people in his own administration. What's your, what's your reaction to that? Can't do that, right? No, you can't do it. <laughs> now, interestingly enough, a president can't hire anybody without they get the advice and consent of the Senate. Mm -hmm. That is true. But in terms of firing people, he can fire anyone he wants. So this Tenure of Office Act clearly was unconstitutional. But anyway, they passed it. 
And Johnson got pissed off and immediately fired Stanton, which he was going to do anyway. So, to get back against Johnson, they decided they were going to impeach him. It goes to the House Judiciary Committee, they get the required majority, they send it to the House, they get the required majority, now it goes to the Senate for the trial. And this took place on, Mar I wrote the date down, March 2nd, 1868. And the charges were he violated the Congressional Law Tenure of Office Act. And um, we have to have two thirds of the Senate. Well, the Republicans got one vote short of two thirds in the Senate. And the people who voted for him said the law was unconstitutional. And number two, this was a difference of policy. I mean, you could agree that you wanted the federal troops there longer, or you could agree that you wanted to take the federal troops out. There's a person in there. Okay. And, and, and get, and get There's the, another one around the corner. And get, and get the country. And get the country moving again. Right? I mean, so it's a difference in policy. So the people who were defending uh, Johnson in the Senate, obviously not that many, but enough not to make the two thirds, said you can't impeach somebody because you disagree on policy. It has to be treason, bribery, or high crimes. It has to be. So both because they considered the act unconstitutional in the first place. And number two, it didn't meet the criteria of impeachment. They thought in the Constitution they couldn't get the required two-thirds uh, majority in the, in the Senate to impeach him. And uh, he went on to have a pretty unnoteworthy presidency. Lincoln didn't know about his personality. But that was a pretty shrewd political move, right? To try to get as much support in the, in the country. The second president uh, that was involved in impeachment hearings was Richard Nixon. And this all had to do with, uh, what was it? Watergate. Tell us about, give us a little background on that. Watergate. Watergate? Yeah. Uh, I know it's it's uh, you often forget these things. I'm not sure I remember as does much anybody, as everybody just hearing. Does, the words anybody, and does anybody remember? So he he sneaks into the Democratic headquarters. Well, he and hires he, he, he fires he, 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 he fires he hires he has like four yeah, yeah. people. Former right? CIA he hires former CIA guys. Yeah. To uh, to Water break Water. into the uh, Democratic National Headquarters, the Watergate complex in Washington D.C. is an upscale place. It's uh, a hotel, expensive hotel. They have expensive condos there. There's upscaled stores there. And you also can rent that office space. So the Democratic National Committee rented out office space. What year are we talking about? 71. We're talking about uh, the election of 1972. Remember who ran in the election? Who was the incumbent was Nixon. Who, who ran and who was the Democratic ca candidate? It was George Park, McGovern. McGovern. George, George McGovern. George Mc Agnew was the vice president. Yeah, but he had been thrown out of okay. office because he took bribes when, uh, from construction companies when he was the governor of Maryland. So um, McGovern was a man way before his time. One of the things he proposed was everybody should make thirty thousand dollars a year. Now, remember, this is nineteen seventy-two, and if you didn't make thirty thousand dollars a year, the, go the federal government would make up the difference. Now, again, you may agree or disagree, but in nineteen seventy-two, that was considered to be as radical as you could get. So, the chances of George McGovern winning the election in nineteen seventy-two were zero to nil. <laughs> But Nixon was a very mentally disturbed guy, and he was 
was especially paranoid. And he didn't want to take any chances. So he hires these, these retired CIA guys. It was a very interesting group. These retired CIA guys had been part of the invasion of Cuba under Kennedy. The little bit of pigs? Yeah. How do you like that? And um, there was a botched job, and the cops, somebody saw them doing it, and they called the cops. And so they screwed up twice in the day. Of the pattern. And of course, two reporters got on the case, and they made it into international news. Remember their name? They made a movie about them, I forgot. Well, they also, for the Washington Post, Woodward and Bernstein. Yeah. Yeah. They wrote a book called All the President's Men and Women Made Into a Movie. So this mentally disturbed guy, thinking that he was going to lose to McGovern, it wasn't a chance in the world, breaks in. The question becomes, how did this happen? So on the basis of Woodward and Bernstein's investigations, the Senate establishes hearings to investigate how this happened. And uh, they, they determine that Nixon had been taping all meetings in the Oval Office between him and whoever happened to be in the Oval Office. So the Senate subpoenaed the tapes, and Nixon refused to give them the uh, tapes. They led to a Supreme Court case as well. U.S. versus Nixon. Nixon. Versus <laughs> Nixon yeah. So he finally said, I won't give you the tapes, but I'll give you transcribed versions of it. And he had his secretary, I remember his her name was Rosemary Woods. But at certain points, it turned out to be very crucial, Rosemary Wood would type in, inaudible. <laughs> I was wondering to know why he taped himself in meetings. I don't know. Well, that. the interesting thing is, is that the, that tape recorder, the, the tape recorder had actually been established by Lyndon Johnson, mm -hmm. and he just never took it out. Isn't that a president's prerogative, though, to release? or not release conversations? That's an excellent point. It's called executive privilege. But when exe who, you, who established executive privilege, do you remember? Went all the way back to, Ge all the way back to George Washington. Okay. The idea was that if some crucial material, by crucial Washington meant crucial to the public interest of the United States, was involved, he could keep private correspondence between him and others secret from the prying eyes of anyone, the media or even Congress. But the key words here is material crucial to the public interest of the United States, not material crucial to your being thrown out of the presidency. So your, your point is well taken, <coughs> but obviously Nixon was abusing its, its, its meaning. Do you think they would have really found him like guilty if he hadn't, you know, resigned? I mean, do you think he would have really been thrown out of office? So, that's a, you're asking an excellent question. So here's a, here's the answer to the question. So on the basis of the Senate investigation, the House sends this motion for impeachment to the House Judiciary Committee. They get the required majority in the House Judiciary Committee, <coughs> the House as a whole, right? And um, Nixon, who's a very paranoid guy, asks uh, Republican, powerful Republican representatives in the House and powerful Republicans in the Senate to have a secret conference with him and tell him you know, what his future would be. And one of these guys is Barry Goldwater, who's about as right as you could be. And they all told him, you don't stand a chance. The evidence is so piled up against you that you're going to be impeached. So there's the answer to this. So before the House could vote on the charges, See, impeachment means you bring charges against the president, and that happens in the House. 
The Senate doesn't impeach. Impeachment means charges. They vote on whether the president will be thrown out. After the trial is conducted. Right? After the trial is conducted. But impeachment only takes place in the House. That, that term is misused. Mm -hmm. At any rate, on the basis of the recommendation of uh, Goldwater and powerful Republican representatives in the House, Lincoln resigns before it could go to the House as a whole, before it could go to the Senate. So the first this was the first question that you might ask is why was he allowed to resign? Why? Well, they just felt they wanted to get this out of there here. You know, too controversial. I, I didn't feel that way. I wanted him to be officially thrown out. The evidence was clearly there. They found what they called the smoking gun. They were able to investigate and find the parts that were called inaudible. And they discovered that he's sitting there in the Oval Office and he's saying, send these guys in. I mean, those are, those are exact words. So, um, that's what happened. It, ne it, it, it never got to impeachment because the House as a whole never voted for me. He resigned. So was this all over the news? Because you, oh, you were alive during that time. Oh, so man. Like, I, would say, like <laughs> I would say that it was the most important political event in my entire life. Didn't that afford That's in that saying a lot. Yeah, it is. Did Ford pardon him? So that's what happened. So when, this is what I wrote in the, so when, so, so Agnew was thrown out of office because the trial took place where he was found to take bribes from construction companies when he was the governor of Maryland. Mm -hmm. And Nixon appoints a powerful U.S. representative, Republican representative, Gerald Ford from Michigan. Mm -hmm. So Ford now becomes president when Nixon resigns. And immediately when he leaves, Ford pardons him for all further criminal and civil prosecution. That's pretty radical. So Ford fills, and this is all happening in 19, this is all happening in, in, in 1972. Because just as anyone in their right mind could have, could have figured out, Nixon slaughters McGovern in the election of 72. As a matter of fact, McGovern's performance was the worst performance of a presidential nominee in all of American history. He was just too radical for something, even if you may agree or disagree with his policy. So in 72, Ford takes over and he has two more years to fill out Nixon's term. Running against him in 76 in the Democratic Party was who? Jimmy Carter. From this tiny state, the South. So the American people have determined in their mind that this was a fix. A fix was in. What, what, do, you, what do they mean by a fix was in? That Nixon said to Ford, I'll resign and allow you to be president with the understanding that you'll pardon me. <clears throat> yes. For all charges, criminal and civil. That's pretty radical. So whether that's true or not is unclear because Ford was a fairly honest guy. But that's what the American people determined, that a fix was in. So to get back, at Ford for the, for the supposed fix, they elected Jimmy Carter and Carter's presidency. It's just a mess. Would Ford not have been president anyway if he didn't have the impeached? If you're impeached, the vice president becomes president. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. So was Nixon vice president was already spiral adding you out? That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. So he, he, he appointed um, Gerald Ford from Michigan to replace Agnew. Is but, that what you're asking? I mean, yeah, but w why does Ford have any motive to pardon Nixon? He wants to be president of the United States. But he's going to be anyway. Like, why does he have it, any motivation? It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't clear to 
I mean, I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm just trying to think what is on Ford's mind. This secret meeting took place between Barry Goldwater and Nixon. Ford wasn't in the meeting. So it, it wasn't clear to Ford that he, he actually would, would be uh, thrown out of office. So is that what, you, is that what you're asking yeah. me? Yeah. Now, I don't, I'm not so sure that's true. Ford wasn't a very intelligent guy, but he had a reputation for being um, an honest guy. So I'm not sure that, that, in fact, the fix was in, but it sure did look and sound pretty fishy. Because it happened immediately. He pardoned him immediately. So maybe Ford really never thought he would end up being the president. So That's what I think. Yeah. Is that what you mean? That's so what I, yeah. Maybe he really didn't have a dog in that fight other than just repaying him for like but it really did I mean whether it's true or not it really did look suspicious. It very sure. suspicious is the right word how long was it from when they found like the tape on the locks to, to Nixon stepping down so that happened in the, the Watergate break-in happened in 1972 before the election and it was 74 when it was thrown out yeah, that's what they did. So these former Cuban CIA guys broke into their office. They jimmied the lock. He remembers me telling them. So they didn't want to go through the same process getting out, so they put um, tape on the lock. And when the Pinkerton guy who was hired by the Watergate people just to go around and make his rounds, he saw that's what he called the Washington DC cops when he saw the tape on them. So you can see this is the same group that uh, screwed up in the Bay of Pigs. Well. Yeah. Bay of Pigs was under Kennedy, right? Who? Under Kennedy or was it under Eisenhower? Well, that's, uh, that's also an interesting point. Eisenhower um, started the training okay. in, 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 in Central America. And... Um, when Kennedy comes into office, Eisenhower has a secret meeting with him and says, you know, this is ready to go. And uh, Kennedy made a terrible mistake. And all of these people who, these Cuban emigres who were training in, in Central America had family in Miami. And they were all talking about this. Castro had spies in my, I mean, everybody knew that this was happening. Mm -hmm. And Kennedy, who was just brand new to the presidency, said, okay, we'll go ahead and do it. But he made a, he made a very fatal compromise. The original plan involved the Navy dropping these guys off. Mm -hmm. This was the southwestern part of Cuba. And it's the same idea that Americans have all the time. We'll invade Cuba, we'll invade Iraq, will invade Afghanistan, and the local people will love us. And they all want to live in a democracy, and they'll welcome our troops with open arms, and they won't be nationalistic. They'll love us, an invading country, and of course, we're always wrong. And we always keep making the same Vietnam, the Bay of Pigs, Iraq, and Afghanistan. And in Korea, I, I, they had taken over the whole country, so I, I think they may have welcomed the American troops. That, but they didn't do much fighting. The South Koreans didn't, didn't do much fighting. Yeah, I mean, like now. You know? So um, it was clear that this, so the, the Navy drops off these invaders, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then the Air Force was supposed to uh, provide support for them. So Kennedy makes a fatal mis compromise. He says, we'll drop them off, but we won't have the Air Force support them. So I think they, the invasion was over like in three days. And the Cuban people who, who the CIA said would welcome these invaders to overthrow the Castro dictatorship um, actually picked up their farmer's pitchforks and tried attacking the... Uh, the CIA, CIA guys uh, themselves. So they captured all of these guys in a very short period of time.
Kennedy really screwed up. It may have been successful with Air Force support, although the whole plan was a ridic ridiculous from the first place. But when he denied Air Force support, it was doomed from the beginning. Okay, any questions about Nixon? Nixon resigned in August 1974. So who am I going to next? <laughs>